Welcome back to AM Northwest. Helping your teen deal with fear and anxiety can be tough for parents. Here to help, we welcome the author of A Psychiatrist's Guide, Helping Parents Reach Their Depressed Teen, Dr. Guyani De Silva. Good to have you with us, doctor. Hi, Helen. Thank you. So talk to me about the definition of, of fear and anxiety. Yes, so fear and anxiety are different things. Right, they're different animals. They're, 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 yeah. they're related, yeah. but they're different. Because fear is an, a construct of our imagination. It's what we choose to believe. Okay. And anxiety is the physiological response to that fear. It's the fight or flight response. So how do you then tell what your kids are going through if they're experiencing fear and anxiety or anxiety? How do you tell? Well, um, many things. So um, teenagers can have um, kind of like school refusal or they might um, they get very defensive. They may look like they have mood swings. Uh, all of that is anxiety. Okay. Um, fear is usually like what they say, like, oh, I'm afraid that uh, I'm not going to get an A on my test. Uh, I'm afraid that every time I hear an ambulance, Ambulance, that my parents are in that ambulance. There's been a car accident. Oh wow! I mean, that's imagination, right? right? That's not reality. That's fear, but that creates an anxiety, which also manifests with physical symptoms. So they get shaky, their heart starts to race, they get kind of sweaty, they start to feel like something bad is going to happen, and it's hard for them to get out of that. How do you help them? Well, parents can first they can explain that fear is different than anxiety, okay. that they are imagining the worst case scenario. It's not reality. They can accept and help their child accept that anxiety is normal. It's normal to feel a little nervous. It's normal to feel anxious when you have a fear or you believe a fear. And so parents can validate for them that, you know what, it's okay that you feel anxious. Then they can help the child use that anxiety to motivate them to either take care of themselves or to connect to another person and just let them know, you know what, and that anxiety, it's okay, it's, it's totally normal for you to feel anxious and everybody feels anxious and I feel anxious too. So share your own vulnerability with your, with oh, your okay. child um, so that they know that they're not the only one who feels anxious or has these fears that develop. So parents can say, you know, hey, uh, you know, when I was your age, I was really scared too. I was scared that I wouldn't be liked. Right. I was scared that I wouldn't do well in school. I was scared that uh, you know all my goals and all these dreams that I had for myself wouldn't come true but they have and so then validate to, for them and give them hope that um, that they can overcome their fear they can overcome their anxiety and even if they have that feeling they can still move on and go forward with their with their dreams so let's say a kid is skipping school because they say they feel anxious mm -hmm. um, do you force them to go to school well actually typically they don't say that they feel anxious they say um, they, they're scared they say they don't say they're scared they say oh, I have a stomach ache I right. can't go right I, I feel so sick I'm afraid that I you know I'm not breathing very well I think I might have had an allergic reaction. I think I ate something that was bad. Or I have a, I have right. a tummy ache. Those are the kinds of things that they say That's when they're true. anxious. So the thing to do with parents is not to say, oh, no, no, you have to go to school or we have to take you to urgent care or choose one or the other. Right. So don't take that kind of uh, forceful fix-it parent kind of stance. But instead, take a deep breath, take a step back and say, oh, gosh, that must be hard. Right. That's hard. Oh, I'm so sorry that you feel, you don't feel well enough to go to school. Let's talk about this a little bit. What's going on? What are you thinking? What do you think school's going to be like? What's going on for you right now? Can I get you a cup of hot tea? Can I get you some water? Be very nurturing. You know, parents, we do that, right? Right. It's so natural to be nurturing. Also, not just the fix But it, I can but also, also see parents being stressed about they've got other kids to take care of. They've, oh, got, yeah. they've got their own job to get to, and then they have a kid who's claiming a stomachache for the fifth day in a row or something. That's right. And, and uh, you know what? I get those calls all the time yeah. from parents who call me and say, you know what, he's not coming out of his room. Right. Uh, I, he can't miss any more school. Well, take a step back. It's okay if they miss a couple days of school. What's really important is to address that anxiety. So call the school and say, my son or my child is having a hard time today, and um, can we set up a meeting to discuss this? So take care of that okay. piece, and then take a breath and go cuddle with your child and say, I know it's, this is really hard. Uh, you do have to go to school, but if it's too hard today, let's talk about it. We'll address this. I'm going to talk to your school. Uh, I think you need to. We need to talk to your therapist if they have one. If right. they don't, then say, you know what? Maybe we need to get some professional help right. too, so that we can resolve this. Because, you know what? You you are a child. You've got to go to school. Your education is so important to me. But how you feel is so important to me also. And I want you to feel better. You and I, our whole family, we're going to get through this um, and figure out what's going on, so you can get back to school. Can anxiety be be a powerful tool? 
anxiety can be a powerful tool because we all have it, right. right? And it motivates us. It motivates us to take care of ourselves. It motivates us to keep safe. And it motivates us to strive to meet our goals. So, so tell them not to worry that it's normal to be anxious. It's totally normal, uh, but it, you know when it does flip over to being debilitating, right. um, then at that point you need to get some help. And um, professionals like me, therapists, teachers, counselors, other adults can really help the child realize that this is a temporary transient uh, state. And it's common for tweens to feel this way. It's so common. Yeah, there's so many things that make uh, teens and tweens very anxious, uh, our society. Right. social media I mean this is just an unprecedented situation that kids are in right you know because there's so much bullying that happens uh, cyber bullying through Facebook there and, and you know on social media people present only their the best self, self yeah right right all their dreams and accomplishments but along with those accomplishments we're all human and we have the other side too we have our failures we have our struggles we have our vulnerabilities and and though we don't share it although I, I, I wish we would share it because yeah. that's really how people connect is by sharing our vulnerabilities right, right? but you're right that's everyone looks like they're having a great time on vacation and all yeah, of that with yeah. their families are very smiling right. and they have such intact families but not not everybody has that right? yeah no and one knows about the fight right before you took the picture exactly Exactly. There you go. Yeah. The book, again, is titled uh, A Psychiatrist's Guide to Helping Parents Reach Their Depressed Tween. Dr. Guyani De Silva, thank you very much. I thank appreciate you. that. Oh. We'll be right back with more AM Northwest. Don't go away. Thank you so much.